Welcome to the Investor Empowerment Series radio show, empowering your real estate investing with techniques, opportunities, and information, minus the BS and sales pitches. Now, please welcome the host of the Investor Empowerment Series, Joe Mueller from the Tough as Nails Investment Syndicate, Joe Mueller. Today on the Investor Empowerment Series radio show, episode 13, we have special guest Linda Libatori from SecurePay1.com. Linda is an entrepreneur, an author, as well as a real estate investor, and happens to be the president of one of our local RIAs in the area, the Lake County Association of Real Estate Investors in Illinois. Linda's company handles all tenant calls as well as eviction assistance for landlords all over the country. For those of you that have buy and hold portfolios or are just getting started, this might be a great option to help build your business and limit the amount of time you spend on your business. Don't miss this great episode. Hey, Linda, this is a great opportunity to have you on the show today. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself and what's going on? I'm out of the Schomburg area and I've been in business probably about seven years now. And we have a unique business there, Joe. We work with real estate investors like yourself that are managing their own property. That's the only difference here is we work with people that like to self-manage. And so what that means mostly is we work with people that want to control all the, I'll call it money-making decisions that go along with the property, but they don't want to handle the day-to-day -day mundane tasks. Okay. So what we do is take their phone calls and we collect their money. And that's not so mundane, right, Joe? Right. <laughs> that's it's really important. <laughs> yeah, that's an important piece of the whole of the whole pie. Yep. Exactly. So we're just a little bit unique that way. All right. So let's take a step back. What's the name of the company that you uh, founded? Secure Pay One. Secure and, Pay One. Okay. Correct. And one of the things I always forget to mention is we actually have a web-based application that was custom built for us when we started the business. To be honest, I don't know, I assume you interview or certainly listen to a lot of podcasts with entrepreneurs in general, mm -hmm. and I certainly have that journey and story, okay. <laughs> is that you know you kind of start out thinking one thing, and then you learn to uh, web and flow according to what you know your clients want. Well, let's so, talk about that. I mean, how did you get started? And I, I love the concept of Secure Pay One, though I think I'm uh, taking myself out of the picture as a property manager for the potential listeners because I do property management. But what you're offering sounds pretty interesting, and that's that's what I want to hear more about. So why don't you talk about how you got started in real estate in general and that entrepreneurial journey? Okay. Well, I'll start with um, how did I get started in general is I worked with real estate investors when I was raising my family. When my children were small, I did part-time like bookkeeping and then I've always had a background with technology. I've worked with software teams, I've done all kinds of software training, but I always say at the productivity level, if you had to, you know, call the helpline then I had trouble with that. I always wanted to make it a very digestible process, you know, like some trainers would be into telling you what you couldn't do and I was into making sure you walked out confident of what you could do, you know. So I took that approach always with software. So when I kind of came upon um, the opportunity to start this business, I went out and got bids on a to create a web-based application. And I looked around for to make it simple. What we really were going to focus on was just ACH payments. Okay. Uh, but I was probably uh, singing a song that was a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> I did do a really good business plan. I did find competitors out there. I don't know if you've heard of, or, and then again, they've changed names since then, but Rent Payment, Clear Now, those are all services that just do ACH. So okay. they're transactional businesses, and that's all they do is perform a transaction where our software was built so cool. Anybody that wanted to be automated, it does a sweep each month. It looks for anybody that's automated. And then we have a service we call On Demand where they can phone, text, email us and let us know, go ahead and take the money tomorrow, you know, in the ACH world. Uh, that's, you know, clearing house word from the bank. Sure. You could take it the next business day. 
So anyway, that's what we thought we'd be about. And then we came upon someone probably just like yourself, <laughs> was very involved in real estate. And I sat across from him, remember it like it was yesterday, on his desk. And I so badly wanted the business, you know, when you're getting started. And he said, I'll tell you what. He said, would you be able to take the phone calls too? He said, if you could take a 30-minute call full of drama <laughs> <laughs> And get it down to one email where I can make a decision on what I want you to do. You got my business. I'll sign up tomorrow. Wow. And so, of course, I said yes. Okay. <laughs> of course, I said yes. Yeah. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, right? I wasn't sure. like, oh, no. And so it really changed our business, though. It changed our business model because now, like you just pointed out, it probably more closely aligns with property management. Mm hmm but still, I would tell you, when you say it's conflicting, it's really not. Because in my case, what I would say, if a new person walked in here today and said, I need somebody that's going to lease it up, I need somebody that has a team, sure. I'm heading to Florida, I never want to see my property again, <laughs> I'd say call Joe. I, I mean, that's that's that. not my guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, seriously, that's not our profile of our ideal client. So my ideal client is at the opposite end of the spectrum they're just getting started they can't yet afford to go into full property management they're worried about each you know diamond nickel even though you could tell them why I'm sure, sure and as well as my as well as I could of why full service you know might be the right answer for them if they build that into the budget but assuming they don't think that way what we provide them is let's say lots of different scenarios but let's just say the person that's working full-time that doesn't want to lose their job because they're answering phone calls from tenants, you know? Sure. So right. we're taking those calls. They give us their team of people they want us to call. So if there's somebody that's big, heavy into rehab, like you talked about, and they keep buying properties at the auction, mm -hmm. they've already built, I'll call it the team, that they want to do the maintenance. They don't want my contacts. Right. So right. they provide me that list of people and as well as the name of, you know, copy of the lease, we enter it all in our system. And then as you just spoke of, there are certain communities that are, I'll call it non-banking communities. I'll call them money order only type communities. Sure. Okay. So my ACH does not sell <laughs> in those communities because if point. you don't have a bank account, you don't have an ACH, right? right? Right. So in those cases, we do an invoice, we do a postage paid envelope, they get it on the same date each month, and there's just a little more, I'll call it TLC, mm -hmm. that's used to prioritize a rent payment that an individual getting started on their own wouldn't do or wouldn't maybe even think to do. But so we so want to make sure handle, that that payment's important. Sorry, sorry. sorry to interrupt. Um, ACH being the baseline thought process behind the structure of your original idea, and you've now created essentially you know, a call center and rent collection type situation, which I think is great. And you're also handling those opportunities and maybe like those C or D type areas where you're not going to see people that have, you know, money in the bank or maybe as credit savvy is what you're saying, where they're going to have that opportunity to do ACH. So you're mailing out an envelope, you know, they get that invoice every month and they send back their rent. So that's awesome. So you're offering the kind of that full spectrum of the collection, which I think is a great point. And we go, and I'll tell you, I'll mention a couple other things. Sure. We also, since we started, just different, I'll call it alleys that we've gone down. So if you think of us more as an assistant to the owner, okay. we're really more their virtual assistant, right? Because they're going to tell us what to do. They're going to say, yes, fix that. No, don't fix that. Tell them it's not in the lease or it is in the lease or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So because of that, I'll get somebody come to me that maybe already has, let's say, 30 properties, and they're already set up in a buildium or rent manager. Sure. And remember, my background is software, and actually a little bit of a passion there to combining the two. We'll get a login for their software. Mm -hmm. So on any given day, we have like you know 20 windows open and <laughs> different softwares and different logins of depending on who's on the phone and what they're calling in about. And, it, you know, it's just, it's really cool. It's high paced, high, you know, lots of activity. Can we talk about what the, what the cost structure is like for an investor who wants to secure, you know, a contract with you guys or whoever you set up, you know, client relationships like that? Sure. Generally a flat fee. Well, not generally, we are. $50 a unit a month. Okay. And 
we do, you know, we do work with economies of scale, um, but as you know, let's just say in probably some of the most challenging areas right now, rent is usually hovering around a thousand. Mm -hmm. So we're at generally five percent, but keeping in mind we're not full service, so I'm not paying their bills, and I'm not doing, you know, sending out our maintenance. Let's say I'm sending out their maintenance. I'm not their leasing agent. I don't play that role. I work with a lot of real estate agents because of that, mm -hmm. because they'll be the leasing agent. And they want my loyalty because in some cases, on people investing in single family homes may decide they want to sell it at some point. Right. So they may rent it a year or two. So as a real estate agent, you know that's a very important relationship and you're not right. going to give it to just anybody mm -hmm. because you want to keep in contact with them. So we've really built some trust over the years where we get real estate agents that come to us and say, handle this property for us, collect the rent you know, handle the communications, and then every year at renewal time, we go back to them to fill it if it needs to be filled. Obviously, if we just need a renewal, then we handle it. So if I've got, based on what you just told me, if I've got like my guy who handles maintenance, let's say, and you get a call in on a Friday afternoon that there's a, a leaking pipe somewhere, you're going to, your staff is going to contact that maintenance guy direct and say, hey, we're going to need you to head out here and check this out type thing? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, I would tell you we mostly we we prefer and only because it's most efficient to text him, just because sure. of the addresses and you know I'll tell you we do a lot of you know rapid motion, and it's just we found that it's just so accurate. You know when I say copy paste, it's a simple thing, right? But mm -hmm. if I have to type fifteen thirty five and I actually you know accidentally type fifteen fifty three, he's off on the wrong block somewhere. Sure. So if I can copy and paste from your software, get it right into his text through the computer, I know I've got him going to the right place. You okay. know. So like a, you're kind of like a go between communicator. You're taking in intake calls and the rent collection as well. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it sounds pretty unique. I mean, I'm thinking in the background about how. Maybe I can integrate some of what you guys offer in some of the management that I'm doing now because, you know, like you said, depending on the area and the type of tenant that could come into play and be worth that value of, you know, $50 per unit per month. If somebody were to bring and, and you, Joe, you know, go ahead. And I was just going to say to go to validate what you're saying, we have worked for property management sure. companies. So they don't see us as a conflict. They see us as a sub vendor, yeah. you know, as you say, just, hey, get those invoices out for us, do this. In fact, you take the calls. Most often they were looking to offload those calls because right. that's really where you get your value is those calls can be nasty sometimes, you know. Are you guys staffed like 24-7? Well, what we do is, uh, I'll tell you, we used, since I started actually, and this was about the business model I copied, is that we've used a call service, but it's a... It's not like your doctor's office that just says, hey, Joe's not in, uh, you know, right. we'll have someone call you back. Sure. They answer as if they're for us. They have the script. They've been with us so long now. And, like, you know, level one, level two, level three, they know how to react to it. And, obviously, anything considered an emergency, then they'll go ahead and, let's say, uh, text one of us, you know. It's yeah. like it's more of an alert, if you will. But, you know, for every tenant, everything that comes in is an emergency, right? <laughs> Sometimes, yes. A lot of times. Yeah. So why don't yes. you tell us a little bit? <laughs> well, they classify it as such. It might not be. It might be a spider in a corner. But You mentioned economies of scale. Somebody brings you 100 units. Is that going to then bring down that monthly fee, for, you know, to $40 a unit or something? You've got yeah, a sliding absolutely. scale. We would work it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, good to know. Let's talk a little bit more about your personal investment background because I know Prior to the call, we talked briefly about how you, you are an investor yourself, and uh, you're actually the president of with the Lake County Investment Association in Illinois? Yes, correct. So right now, I'm the president of the Lake County Property Investors Association. And when I say right now, I'm the president. They've been around some 25 plus years. So they've been around long before me. Mm hmm when I got started, obviously, as you know, one of the, well, for you, it may have been different, but for me... Because I, what, I, I've always been, almost always, a licensed real estate agent, mm -hmm. but I never was a practicing agent. So I only had that because of the people I worked with that did investment property. They really, I'll say, encouraged me to go do that. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but I was never active with it. I was really doing software training and all types of other things. So right. I kept this active license. So anyway, why, why did I say that? Oh, so when I started the business, <laughs> I didn't come in with this book of business. You know, I, I would I would recommend that if you start a business that you have a, a book of business before you start. That made that first, I'll say, 18 months very challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, here's Joe who never met me before, and I'm saying, well, let me collect your money. He's like, yeah, right, you're not touching my money, you know. Right. So I had to do a lot to prove myself. You know, all my good reputation and capital, let's say, was in other fields, right? So I worked my way up with that. But the point is, because of that, I looked for real estate investment associations because I knew that was my target market was Perfect. finding those investors. Yep. So I came across Lake County and, you know, took a drive out there, met with who was then on charge of their membership. And, and I'll tell you, it's a great guy and it's a great story. When I went and met with the man from Lake County uh -huh. and I was about ready to write my check to become a vendor member, he said, you know, like, listen here, young lady, don't just write us a check, in which I wasn't a young lady, but he said, don't just write us a check. If you're not going to be active in this organization, I'll tell you right now, save your money, you're not going to get any business. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, there was, you know, it was really powerful. And then I was convinced like, hey, you got to take my check, you know, but <laughs> it was really good advice because sure. then I made sure I was at every meeting. And because I was coming from a little bit further, I was always early for every meeting because, you know, when you have to go to a meeting across the street, you run out at the last minute when you have to go far. <laughs> right you allow extra time, right? So I allowed a lot of extra time. So, you know, soon I was making the uh, name badges, you know, filling the coffee. And before you know it, I became president. So I don't know. Wow. It's all volunteers, 25 plus years. It's great. When you talked, we talked a little bit about Waukegan property. Mm -hmm. You know, I have since come to learn a lot. We have like 200 members and I'm in like probably eight other groups like that, wow. you know. So I, I really, really indoctrated myself into the mind of the investor, hearing their pains. You know, the sheriff comes out, real estate tax appeals, you know, everything that an investor needs to know. I'm actively hearing the latest, you know, each month. I mean, I probably go to a good four to five meetings per month. So you're a good person to know. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Because <laughs> you, you've got a lot of contacts in the business. I, I do, and I keep it. Yeah, I always say we really, truly do keep really active, definitely. Okay. Definitely. I have a meetup I run actually uh, out of Schaumburg as well. It's the investor. Really? Yeah, the investor. It's called Investor Empowerment Series Chicago. It's actually the website as well, Investor Empowerment Series Chicago. I'm writing it down right yep. now. <laughs> it's, uh, we actually hold, hold meetings at the Westwood, Westwood Tavern Restaurant over there on oh, uh, Meacham. And down the block, yeah. Off, yeah. And one of the things that you pointed out that I think is important to reiterate is that you, you have to be involved if you want to walk out of the room and, and, and take, take something away with you, right? Whether you're a sponsor member that's sponsoring the group and you know providing a service to the attendees or you're just an attendee there to listen, learn, and meet people, the best way to do that is engage yourself beyond just showing up. Even though you know 90% of the battle is showing up, Beyond showing up, you also have to get out there, talk to people, tell them what you're doing, and you're a great example of how that can ultimately lead to some type of success. So I think that's awesome. The fact that you're the president is incredible. Have you, you said you've been a member for 25 years? No, no. I say the group itself the has group been itself around 25, 25 years. years. I've only been a is, member, awesome. you know, six years probably. Okay. You know. But, you know, an example of starting off at, at the bottom and reaching your way to the top. So that's incredible. We did talk about... Waukegan, briefly, you touched on it. Waukegan's an area north of Chicago. It's a suburb that's closer to Wisconsin border. It's more of a community where you're going to see kind of a wider range of neighborhood class, I'll call it. Maybe the high end being like sure. a B. Sure, income levels. Income levels, yep. yeah. Income, educational levels, yep. You'll see, yes. you'll see a B or a B minus is maybe kind of the top end, and maybe with a couple A quality properties, and then all the way down into the D you know, D-level type stuff where you don't necessarily want to be walking around at night by yourself, right? Right, um, right. Based on that type of information, I mean, are you doing a lot of business up in that type of an area? So would our listeners be benefited by contacting you if they do want to invest in that type of location like Waukegan? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We definitely, um, we don't work with any Ds. <laughs> okay. Um, but definitely 
probably be um, we have a, a good portfolio. We have we have some very active investors in that area, very active, and they're always willing to help. I'm actually on the board of the affordable housing out there too. Okay. Affordable housing of Lake County is out there. They have like a rent a rent subsidy program that's really good. You know, they'll come out and speak at our meetings and in fact just spoke at our last meeting to try to get landlords on their program. Okay. Which, you know, would be kind of comparable to a section eight, you sure. know. We work with Section 8 in Chicago. We have a great deal of properties. In fact, we, I guess we didn't really say this, we work with landlords across the nation. Yep, that was one because of my questions. Of the, yeah, because of the fact that we're not doing, I'll call it the showings, the actual maintenance. So we have like Chattanooga, Tennessee. We have Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Where else do we have? A couple of small units in New York. Some just solo owners, they're just all owners on their own trying to build a portfolio. So our portfolios range anywhere from one to two units that they're just starting. Like we took one guy from 40 to 160 wow. in like two years. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Is yeah. That in yeah. Chicago well, or is that somewhere that? else? No, that one's actually Waukegan. That's Waukegan. Waukegan. Wow. Chicago, though, we just did one in Chicago. She's multifamily. Mm -hmm. uh, she went from one six flat to, I think she's got about five, six flats now. Wow. That's impressive. Those are, those yeah. are good stories that I like, I like to bring out there, too, as well. You know, as I told you before the show, the goal you know, of, the, of the podcast is to kind of inspire and motivate investors out there you know, to utilize this information, which is available for free, and maybe they'll grab a tidbit out of it and be able to uh, you know, help their own business grow. So I'd love to hear stories like that where you got guys starting at, you know, 60 or 40 units and ending up with 100 and something units and vice versa. You know, one building that now is turned into five buildings equating to 30 units and you guys help them along the way. I have a few more questions that I just want to touch on related to Secure Pay One, just out of my own curiosity. How many properties are you guys managing? In general? Not, just, I shouldn't say managing. How many properties are you guys providing a service for? Assisting, right? Assisting with, yes. We're just at about a thousand. We're a wow. thousand units. Yep. That's and great. we really, honestly, we enjoy it because, it, as you just said, the each of them is their own story, and mm -hmm. you know, it's a it, it's a battle. You know, to be a landlord, as you said, you really do have to stay inspired each day. I mean, mm -hmm. I really believe that, and in order to grow. At some point, and Joe, you've experienced this more than anybody, your time just gets pulled every which way. Yes. And at some point, something you have to let go of. And right. if they can decide to do that, then they're going to grow. You know. Right. Sure. That's a great point. Is, uh, and I think that's a great segue to point out into just discussing time management very briefly and why a service like yours can be extremely beneficial to an investor because a lot of people when they first get started they buy a couple we'll call it one house or they have a few rentals maybe just single family in their brain they're envisioning that they're going to be able to manage it on their own and handle things you know they've, they've got this perfect vision uh, with with the potential for some hiccups but most people are positive about the way they're going to handle problems and say okay well yeah well i'll take the phone call at work and i'll call my guy who can go you know i'll call my favorite plumber and go have him go out to the house and in reality, what happens on a time management level is as you grow in the real estate investment space, you know, you're, you get split like 10 different ways from Sunday every single day, mm -hmm. whether you're transitioning from a part-time type situation into a full-time or not. Because if you're part-time, you're still working a full-time job and it's, it's, it can be very challenging. And I've, you know, I started that, that same way where investing was kind of a part-time thing for me and now it's grown into a full-time business where literally my schedule today has like four different other, you know, appointments on it. I'm going to go look at a property as soon as we hang as soon as we hang up the phone, I'm going to be bidding on one through auction.com. I have to get my bids in before one o'clock and that's probably going to get stretched out because every time you submit a bid on a property, it extends the auction for another five or 10 minutes. Uh, and then I've got a second or a third appointment after that in the afternoon. Uh, and I'm hoping to meet up with my dad today at some point. So lots of stuff going on and it's all about time management. The fact you're offering you know, a service that's going to create, you know, an opportunity to alleviate some of that stress, I think is something everyone should consider, whether it's full property management or integrated with you guys in some capacity is, is awesome. And then again, that's why I wanted to have you on the show. I didn't really know much about what Secure Pay One offered. I knew you did the ACH stuff, but the call center opportunity is incredible. I mean, that that's going to simplify a lot of people's lives just by hearing this podcast, which I love. Well, and you know what, Joe, to piggyback what you just said, I think that you're a wise enough investor that you see that time. And I do see that so many times when they come to us 
uh, quite honestly, sometimes they come to us almost kind of in tears. Right. They've been they've really been through been battered sometimes by the tenants. Um, for us, if you think about, if you really stop and think about it, it's it's really objective. I'm literally just enforcing the lease. I'm not your friend. Right. I'm not trying to be your friend. And then the other side of that is I realize that Joe can't afford to lose that tenant either. So right. I can't be so rough with them. That is your client and you want them to stay. But the reality is you, you only want them to stay on the correct terms of paying the lease. And so for me, that's very easy. For that new investor that's standing in front of that guy whose family is, you know, hit some hiccup, he's really having a hard time with saying you got to pay. We see people almost lose their buildings. I mean, we literally, I've just had one that, you know, the bank was about to foreclose and oh. it, it was just really, really a terrible deal because he he was so empathetic to each situation. And I get it, but you can't do that at the sake of losing your building, you know. Sure. And and so we encourage them to give out like charitable lists when they start. Here's a list of charities in the area. Give that out with a lease. So when that day comes up, we just refer back to that list. Well, do you remember that list that Joe gave you when you signed the lease? Oh, no, I don't have it. Oh, guess who's got a copy? <laughs> you know? I said, I'll get you that list, but call your aunts, your uncles. But Joe cannot, he's not the charity here. I, right. I have to collect the rent. We've got a legal process that we have to follow. And it's so much easier for me to deliver that news than especially the first, you know, the, the new investor that's just trying to grow. You know, sure. that can just really damper their whole progress. Okay, good point, good point. You mentioned, well, no, let's, I have a question related to that. So if somebody is in a situation, we'll call it a tenant, is in a non-payment type situation and the landlord ultimately makes a decision that there's going to be an eviction that they're going to have to file, what's your role in that process, if any? Oh, it's, 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 too, it's more than, again, we originally bargained for. <laughs> but it's okay. That's the evolution of the small business. Again, picture, sure. I thought I was just doing ACH. Right. <laughs> um, those were good people, right? So what we're doing is we're filling out the legal forms on day six. And again, Joe, you've got so much experience. You know what I'm saying. Not every investor is going to hand those out on day six. If, if you're listening to this and you're brand new, that sounds crazy. You'll say to me, of course they're going to. Well, it costs money to deliver those, especially when you start to talk about scaling. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to really take a closer look at the calendar. And we do that with our owners and take a look at, you know, what day of the month, like, for instance, we we're just looking at September. September 5th is a Monday. It's a holiday. Are we giving out five days on September 6th? No, absolutely not because of the mail and everything else. So even though your lease will say with the mail, it needs to be in on the 5th, mm -hmm. in the, at the back end, you're going to be making business decisions realistically on when you want those issues. Sure. So, so then we're going to get them all ready. So we're going to fill them in, and that and that goes from Illinois to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. You know, whatever whatever the rules of the lease are, that's built in our system. And then we're going to get those back to the owner. I'll call it or their appointed person, because okay. in most counties, uh, that's got to be hand delivered in order to really go to court. And, and again, we could do another thirty minutes on. You know, well, do you want it to just go out? You know, I have some that will say just mail it because they're not going to court necessarily. Others, they've learned to be court ready, if nothing else, and they'd rather spend that extra $10 or whatever it is they have to pay. You know, that could be as high as $50, $60 per five day. Sure. So if you think everything's in the mail, you're not going to want to spend $500 to deliver those 10. You're going to want to wait a right. little bit. I understand. And then... And then, of course, once they're ready to execute it, then they give it back to us because they've got it uh, notarized. And now we wait for the day they say it goes to their lawyer. They've given, you know, we, it, these are all group emails. So now it would go to the lawyer, to the owner. Here's a copy of the lease. Here's a copy of the five day. Here's a copy of the ledger. Because remember, we're keeping the ledger. Right. So then they, again, don't have to pick up a finger necessarily, but they have to ultimately make that call, you right. know, when they want to pull the trigger. Be part of the decision process. That's awesome. I mean, so you're handling the paperwork on the front end. Is, I'm assuming you're providing the paperwork other than the lease, or do you actually have 
you know, boilerplate type documents that you mm, offer? We prefer not to go there, or my lawyer prefers I don't go there. <laughs> How's <laughs> okay. that? Makes sense. So while we, we may have some templates and resources people you could go to, if you, like with lease renewals, we'll help with your lease renewals, but we want you to give us the lease template. Right. You know, like, let's give the example. Lake County, we can use an addendum. Cook, you know, Chicago and Cook County, it's highly recommended you go with another full lease. Okay. So in those cases, we're filling out their, again, their template lease, you know. Okay. So, yeah, we don't get involved too much on the lease process because, remember, we're not leasing agents. And although, again, through my, you know, my various groups that I'm in, we, we have met, I don't know if you know, uh, Varela, is it, Osborne? She's called, like, Legal Doc. She's a good speaker if you need okay. somebody for your group. Sure. Uh, she goes through because she's been in court and defended a lot of them. So she has an awesome lease. So she's a great resource. Um for a new landlord, if he's looking for a really tight, you know, that type of person that wants the lease with everything in it, you know. Okay. Well, maybe I'll reach out to her uh, after yeah. when we hang up. We'll, uh, I'll see if I can get the information. I'll reach out to her and see if she wants to either be a part of the show or I can get her information to at least offer out there. Uh, that sounds pretty cool. Um, that's a great point you bring up because you're not an attorney. You don't want to be in the document drafting business or get yourself in a trick bag where something you produced is now creating a problem on the backside and you've got multiple parties, or, you know pissed off at you because of language yeah. and on a piece of paper. Right. But that's great. I mean, so you're handling a lot of the headaches that seem to come up with being a rental property owner and dealing with the tenants. And uh, this is the first time I've personally, I, I've heard about call center type situations like Pat live is an example that I'm aware of where, you know, you can pay a monthly fee and they're going to intake your calls and type up a report or an email, send it to you and say, here's what quote, you know, here's what the tenant from unit one, two, three said, but in your case, you're actually, you know, analyzing the situation, not necessarily coming up with a solution, but providing, you know, what the situation is. So the landlord or the owner of the property can create their own, you know, decision, make their own solution or make their own choice on it. So good point. Great information. You mentioned at one point that you don't do any D type neighborhoods. Are you vetting properties before you're intaking no, them? No, no. I guess maybe I should have said that different when okay. I said I don't no, do fine. anything. We don't work for slum landlords. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. Well, I'm out. Well, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. My, my lawyer won't let me. Right. <laughs> so, no, I guess it, they're in challenging areas. Maybe I don't know for sure. I mean, certainly I have in Chicago, that's the south side in in very, I'll call it challenging areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's considered D. I think, of, I know it's really hot for investing right now. Right. And I have a landlord in that particular case, or well, I have a few in that area. One in particular, I'm thinking of a newer one. He lives in the area. He loves the area. He promotes the area. And he, you know, it, a lot of those areas, and I don't know them as well, and I'm from the Chicago area, but, you know, all these new neighborhood names that they give, where one starts and where one ends, I don't know those all. Right. Uh, we have, you know, we do a lot with Rogers Park. Where else which do is, we have? Which is way north. That's like the opposite end of the Way side. north, yep. yeah. That's the border exactly. of Evanston, out of the, almost, almost not the city of Chicago. Exactly, um, but that used to, like we have, I have personally watched, witnessed that change there. It's incredible. Still, you know, probably not, well, is there any area of Chicago really that's totally low crime? No, but certainly I've seen quite a facelift, quite a change of tenants. Um, that Loyola campus, if you haven't seen it lately, it's absolutely incredible. Well, witness that change that's where we meet for one of the groups oh okay and yeah it's a really powerful group there are people that have uh, they've probably been around 20 plus years and they're very involved with the political process as well you know chicago it's all politics <laughs> there's, there's a lot of it yeah there is for sure <laughs> yeah, we don't need so. to get into that part of it though <laughs> no um, i like what you brought up and what i'm hearing in the background what i'm thinking is you know you said it's kind of an ever-changing face and it doesn't have to be Chicago, any large metropolitan city. Yes. And it's important for real estate investors to really, we'll use the term vet, but vet out the areas that they're going to be investing in or considering purchasing in to the point where in the city of Chicago, as you kind of hit on, you know, block by block, there can be yes. a, a pretty extreme difference in not only the, the quality of the neighborhood and the crime rate, but you know, the type of gentrification that might be occurring in Chicago is an amazing landscape for something like that, where, you know, the worst area of the city 
five to ten years ago is now becoming one of the most popular areas yeah. for people to purchase and live in because of the fact that they've been, you know, knocking down buildings and creating a better situation. And as an investor, I just want to point out that, you know, anybody who's out there considering buying in the south side of Chicago or anywhere in the city, any metropolitan area, you got to really know the neighborhood. You got to you got to spend time in there. You can't just look online and find some cheap property and you know that looks good as through the pictures and maybe do a quick drive by. I mean, I've been there myself as well, where I've, I've looked at city of Chicago property and everything looks good on paper. And then you drive through that block. The next block might be great, but you know, you cross over one main, uh, one main roadway to the West and you don't want to be hanging out there in the middle of the day anymore. So yeah. uh, just a nice uh, piece of advice for the listeners. I think that's, uh, that's awesome. If I can add something to that yeah. story, I have a Please. really good example. Somebody, one of my investors, actually the one I told you about in Tennessee, is quite a few properties, and his he has a, a regular, I'll call it day job. He's mm-hmm. in sales, so he's out and about. And somehow someone came to him with an opportunity on South Side of Chicago. And, of course, he came to me being, you know, he's been with me for three years. He's like, what about this property? And it's exactly what you're saying. I don't know that area enough. So what I did was give him two of my investors that are in that area and said, you know, let them check it out because you pinpointed it. It is definitely block by block, and there's some wonderful areas to invest in. Right. But when you're from out of state, and we see that a lot, we heard of somebody recently, they do uh, pro- uh, properties in Indiana, or Memphis. So I think you said it best. Any large, you know, anybody, we're here from Chicago. So I, I am in, what, what do I have here? Probably eight different property investment groups, and I'm just, the tip of it, right? Mm-hmm. I, I still would not by far say I'm no way the expert in this area. Right. And because there's so many areas. So, you know, there's nothing different about Annapolis, Indiana. It's such a hot spot everybody's talking about to invest in. But as you just said, you better find somebody local that knows which blocks are good and which blocks aren't so good, you know. Right, and, and the guys that I know or the gals that I know that are investors on the south side, or I, I actually know some in the Indianapolis uh, area as well, these are the, their daily routine entails, you know, driving through certain neighborhoods, streets, and blocks on a regular basis. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll focus on, you know, they'll find an area they like and maybe they purchase their first, maybe their two properties, three properties, and then they really – just like you brought up an investor earlier that you said lives on the south side and is very involved in promoting the community. I have a few friends like that as well. And they are focused on a few, you know, maybe a four, five, six block radius of where their investing business is at least starting or growing because of the fact that it's an ever-changing environment and they want to make sure they're buying in the right spot and they're getting the right types of opportunities and deals because otherwise you can really find yourself in a rough spot regardless of how many you know, uh, relationships you have with servicers like you guys, for example, because it's never, it's never easy, but it's, a, it's exceptionally harder when you're in a situation where you can't even feel comfortable going to collect your rent if you had to, or stopping by the property to deliver a five day notice. So yeah, all good information. Let's change gears a little bit. Do you have any type of book or podcast or educational platform that you would recommend to the listeners? We can, we can talk about Lake, the Lake County Landlord Association a little bit if you want to touch on that, but I'm also curious if there's something you know, just a reference guide that you might be able to offer, whether it be a favorite book related to real estate or something you're involved in that the listeners might be able to benefit from by listening to or buying or something like that. Well, I'm not sure, but I did actually just release a book. It just came out August 28th, but okay. I have another one that's actually in the works. The first one is just really a, it's a daily thought. It's for Really, I'd say for a brand new investor, for anybody that likes a daily routine, Mm -hmm. and what it does is just expose them to 365 things about real estate in the form of a short excerpt, like a Joel Olstein, right? Sure, sure. (laughs) Just a short excerpt to read that day. Maybe it's about a homeowner association. But podcasts, uh, morning routines, I just think it's huge. As you said, you know, you said you try to educate and you try to motivate. I think that's super, super important. What you're doing is huge. Of course, Joe Fairless, he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's a big national guy on multifamily. It's really his, right. I'll call it, platform. Sure. 
who else is there? I love EO Fire. That's not necessarily real estate related, sure. but Entrepreneur on Fire is what you're referring yeah, to, right? Yeah, exactly. And then Joe, Joe Fairless is another podcaster. He's probably got a couple hundred out on the scene, and I believe he started from a small uh, New York apartment and grew, uh, yeah. you know, with basically nothing, and grew himself into you know hundreds of units in the multifamily space, and all good information and you know great reference points for any investor to listen to. So. I had an appointment with Joe Fairless at one point to, to have him interview me for a podcast. And unfortunately, I had something oh. like family related detrimental to my existence occur the night before. And I was like, oh, I cannot yeah. I cannot do this. So I got to I'm going to write that down as a point to kind of reach out to him and see if I can get back on the show or have him interviewed on this one. So. Um, yeah, absolutely. He is. He's the best. I did an interview. In fact, that was just released yesterday. So I didn't know if you were setting me up for that because I didn't think I told you that. I'll send you that email. Sure. Um, yeah, but I'd love he, to hear it. Yeah, and I'll give you the link for uh, the email for who the assistant that helped me. And she was just really great. Sam, awesome. I don't know if it was still Sam when you were doing it. But yeah, um, he's definitely inspiring. But how about Grant Cardone? I mean, I sure. love I love his uh uh, the line I like best from Grant that's always resonated with me is, I don't know, it sounds like you're in a similar boat where I definitely have a lot of energy, definitely try to put that to a positive manner. And when he says, you know, I have relatives and friends that tell me I, I need to lay down, that I'm you know, moving too fast. And he said, you have anybody like that, that's not really your friend. And, <laughs> you know, you come of a certain age and you realize that, like, this is who I am and right. I'm not going to lie down, <laughs> you know. No, great. Grant Cardone's, uh, he's got several books out there. He's got podcasts, he's got videos, he's got mentorships. I mean, <laughs> he's an awesome guy. He's really hitting the circuit hard and also an incredible story. So I appreciate you for mentioning um, what he offers. I have read his book, not the most recent one, but he's got the 10X book. Right, um, right. That one I read probably right when it came out, and I can't remember if that was a, a couple years back or not, but it was within the last few years I read it. So that's good information for the listeners to get. If anyone's not familiar with Grant Cardone, please look it up. Uh, he's got some books on Amazon and a lot of information out there he's offering. He's an investor. He's also mainly an entrepreneur and very motivational and inspiring. Before we wrap it up, do you, do you have anything else you want to add to uh, the listeners? Maybe the listeners want to hear about what's going on with you for the podcast? or Um. No, I, I think that's it. I would just say that one other thing that you said that I think is an important one is when you you said this about yourself, and hopefully this is true of many of your listeners, when they talk about whether they choose property management or a service like ours, when you talked about your day just today and you talked about how I'm going to go to the auction and it's due at a certain time, sure. that's what I'm sure you you do as well is try to point out to yourself you're there to, as your expertise grows in that area, you easily could save yourself between what, one and, you know, on a really good day, maybe nine, 10,000, right? By being the best guy, the best bid mm -hmm. and sharpening those skills. When you weigh that against property management or services and something's got to give, you can't let that, that bid be what gives, you know, because right. that could open up a whole new door for you, you know? And I think one of the one of the things that I'm getting out of the podcast and talking to you that's making me kind of the, the, the wheels spin in the back of my head for all the listeners out there is the fact, like we talked about at the beginning, which is there's a lot of guys out there, gals out there that might have a handful of properties or maybe 10 or even we've got several clients who've bought 20 uh, properties that we're assisting with on the management side. For every one of our clients, you know, there's five more out there that are still trying to uh, manage their time and handle those types of issues on their own. And you're absolutely right. If you want to maximize your possibilities and, and really benefit from what real estate investing offers, there's things that you don't want to do. There's things that your high level of involvement in your business, really you shouldn't be handling. So outsource it, You know, find a property management, connect with you through uh, securepayone.com and you know minimize some of those daily mundane tasks and and help you, you know, that essentially is going to help you create a more profitable business. Even though there is a fee associated with it, that fee is going to return to you tenfold in the amount of time you're going to save in the, in the end, right? Right. So I, yeah, think, I think I summed it up pretty good right there. You sure did. <laughs> you did an awesome, that's an awesome job. And again, it doesn't need to be me. It could be full management. It could be, sure. you know, the high school kid, but figure something out right? because you've got to put a number on your time, you know? Absolutely. No, absolutely. All right, so what's the best way for our audience to uh, get a hold of you and your firm? 
as you already said, securepay1.com. Okay. Um, they can email me at Linda L. So it's you know six letters there. They always miss the L. Linda L. at securepay1.com. Okay, secure. Pay and one. I guess I can give my cell phone too if they just wanted to call. You know, there's no obligation. We're not high pressure here. Sure. You either are fit for us or you're not. Uh, my cell phone is eight four seven four three six nine zero zero six. All right, so we've got, I'm going to repeat it right now. We've got securepay1.com is the main website contact. Your email is Lin, Linda L, with an L at the end of Linda, at yeah. securepay1.com. And your cell is 847-436-9006, which you might be a little crazy for giving out. And maybe you need to have someone start screening after this goes on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I hope not. No, no, that's great. I mean, I that's you your really direct contact. Listeners. And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be people with questions that are going to be interested in what you guys offer. And, you know, hopefully we can work together at some point in the future. I'm going to give it some consideration for some of the properties that I'm working with now that I actually personally own and manage in some of the areas that are a little further away. Because uh, I've got some portfolios in Milwaukee and Indianapolis and Chicago area as well. So I'm going to give it a good hard thought. I really appreciate you taking the time with me today, Linda, to uh, do the interview. And, you know, I know your time is valuable. So thank you very much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much, Joe. And I'm going to follow up. I hope to see you in Schaumburg. We can follow up. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) We'll get you out at the meetup. Maybe you can talk to the group. That'd be awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a good day. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Investor Empowerment Series radio show. Be sure to tune in next week for another empowering episode. We welcome your feedback, so please rate us on iTunes and Stitcher and visit us at www.investorempowermentchicago.com or tannisgrouprealty.com. 